Before we proceed with this course, we need to do two things, install Audacity on your computer and check that your microphone is detected by Audacity. To get started, go to the official Audacity website, audacityteam.org. On the homepage, you'll see two download options, and it's important to understand the difference between them. The second link is the one I recommend for beginners. When you use this link, you will download Audacity as a standalone software. You will get only the Audacity software, no extra program will be installed. For most users, this is the simplest and best option, because it gives you exactly what you need without any additional tools. The first yellow button, on the other hand, will download Audacity through another program called MuseHub. MuseHub is a tool created by Muse Group, the company that now develops and maintains Audacity. It is not like that if you cannot install Audacity from the yellow button with MuseHub. You can, but you will get a bunch of other programs that you do not need. I will walk you through the installation process using both download options. However, for beginners, I strongly recommend using the second link to download Audacity without MuseHub. This will keep things simple and ensure you have only what you need to get started. Let me show you the installation process step by step. I am using a MacBook, so I will demonstrate the process for macOS. If you are using Windows or Linux, your installation will follow the typical process on those operating systems. Even if you're not using macOS, I recommend watching this process. It will help you understand the workflow and interface. First, I will install Audacity using the yellow Download Audacity button. Click on Download Audacity 3.7.5 and the file will start downloading automatically. It will detect your OS and the download will start shortly. The file save pop-up appears and check the file name. It has MuseHub inside the file name. That means Audacity will be installed through MuseHub. If you install using this file, it will install both Audacity and the MuseHub helper. I'll explain what the MuseHub helper is in a moment. For now, I will save the file to my downloads folder. The file is downloaded, but notice one thing on this Audacity website. After downloading, it recommends connecting to cloud storage. However, we will not connect to the cloud at this point. We want everything on our local machine or computer. I will go to the Downloads folder. You can see the downloaded DMG file here. If you are on Windows, you will get an .exe file instead. Double-click on the file. A new window has opened, and I have to drag the Muse Hub icon into the Applications folder. Since I already have Muse Hub installed, it asks me whether to replace the file or keep both. I will choose Replace. If you're installing it for the first time, you won't see this message. The Muse Hub Helper is now installed on my computer. To open it, I will go to the App Launcher, search for Muse Hub, and click on the Muse Hub Helper icon. Since this application was installed from outside the App Store, a message pops up asking if I am sure I want to open it. This is a standard security warning on Mac OS. It's just a one-time message, so I'll go ahead and click Open to proceed. Once the Muse Hub Helper is open, I can see its main interface. The Muse Hub Helper allows me to manage different Muse Hub apps and plugins all in one place. It also asks for permission to install additional applications from the Muse Group, which is the team behind Audacity. At this point, the Audacity app is already installed because it was included with the Muse Hub Helper. From the Muse Hub interface, I can easily see two types of information. Apps that are already installed on my computer. Other available apps that I can choose to install if needed. I want to highlight something here, I have both the latest version of Audacity, 3.7.5, and an older version installed on my computer. The Muse Hub Helper automatically detects that the older version of Audacity is installed and, therefore offers me an update option. However, I do not want to update that older version, so I will cancel. If I want to open Audacity directly from Muse Hub, I can simply click on the arrow icon next to Audacity, and it will launch the software. However, it's not necessary to open Audacity this way. You can also open it directly from your Applications folder on Mac OS, or through the Start menu on Windows. Now that I've launched Audacity, you can see that the software is running successfully. The Startup page will show some slides. It is related to connecting to cloud, checking some apps for MuseHub, and taking a survey. We do not need any of these at the moment, so I will cross them out. The latest version, Audacity 3.7.5, has been installed. Now let's explore an alternative installation method. If you don't use other Muse Hub applications or plugins, you might prefer to install only Audacity to keep things simple. There is nothing wrong with installing the Muse Hub helper, but I want to show you a different way to do it. This method allows you to install only Audacity software without the Muse Hub helper. To do this, go to the official Audacity team website. There, you'll find an option to download only Audacity. I clicked on the download without Muse Hub link, and a file save pop-up appeared on my screen. Notice the difference this time. 
the file name has no MuseHub inside it. This confirms that it is only the Audacity installation file without any additional software or tools. The installation process is very similar to the previous one. First, I will go to the location where I have downloaded the file. Then double-click the downloaded DMG file to start the installation. On macOS, a window appears, and I have to drag the Audacity icon to the Applications folder. This is a standard installation process for macOS software. If you are using Windows, the process will be slightly different. You will need to follow the on-screen instructions to complete the installation. It's straightforward and doesn't require any additional steps. Once the installation is done, I can open Audacity from the app launcher. Here's something I noticed when searching for Audacity on my computer, I now see two versions of Audacity in the app launcher. This is because I already had the older version installed on my system. If you're installing Audacity for the first time, you will see only one version. The reason I keep the older version is that I teach Audacity to other people. Some of my students still use the older version of the software, so it's helpful for me to have both versions available. Now, as you can see on the screen, Audacity 3.7.5 is successfully installed and running. Please note that you do not need to connect to the cloud, even though the starting pop-up shows it. If I click continue here, a pop-up will appear to create a cloud account and connect with Audacity. We do not need it, because uploading everything to the cloud will make our workflow complex. At the same time, the cloud Audacity offers is not very stable, so you may face some trouble using it. Instead, do nothing for the cloud, and everything will be on your local machine. Keeping all the files on the local machine is convenient, and we have 100% control over it. I will end this tutorial by checking to see if your microphone is detected in Audacity. You can check this by clicking on the audio setup button. Under the recording device, you will see a list of all microphones connected to your computer. This list includes both physical microphones and virtual microphones. Virtual microphones are created by certain software, and you don't need to worry about those right now. If you notice more microphone names than the ones physically connected, they are likely virtual microphones. You should focus on identifying the physical microphone you are using. If your desired microphone appears on the list, then everything will work correctly. If your microphone is connected to your computer but does not show up in the list, there are two things you can try. First, you can rescan audio devices. When you click on the rescan, Audacity will search for all the microphones connected to the computer and update the list. If you see an error message while selecting a microphone, rescanning can also help resolve the issue. These error messages don't always appear, but if they do, a rescan will often solve the problem. If rescanning doesn't work, the second solution is to quit Audacity and open it again. Restarting Audacity forces the software to reload and recognize all the connected devices, including your microphone. If your microphone isn't listed, you can either rescan the devices or restart Audacity. Once Audacity 3.7.1 is installed, and your microphone shows up correctly, you're ready to start working with it. You just watched a lecture from my Audacity course for beginners. If you want to use Audacity for voiceover, audiobook narration, or podcasts, you will be interested in this course. I will put a link to the course in the description. This course is also part of a more robust solution, Audacity Bundle. The Audacity Bundle includes the necessary courses to learn Audacity as a beginner or advanced user. It also has built-in macros that can improve your voice with one click. You will also receive a custom EQ personalized to your voice recording only. The bundle can be purchased from my shop. Purchasing all the items in the bundle separately will cost you $645. However, with the bundle, you will get everything for just $197. I will give all the necessary links in the description and in the pinned comment. Thanks for watching.